Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Nuggets of Truth. There is some confusion about the crucifixion of Jesus, as there are those who try to slander the Word of God by saying that Jesus did not actually die, but was in a comatose type state of unconsciousness and only looked or appeared to be dead. But is that what the Bible actually teaches? Let us now dissect the Word of God and find out for ourselves and not just take someone's opinion for it. I want to read two portions of scripture, starting with Luke chapter 9, verse 21 through 22. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Now Luke chapter 18, verse 31 through 34. And taking the twelve, he said to them, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked, and shamefully treated, and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. Matthew chapter 27 verse 45 through 56 states that at the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m., Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit, which means he died. Several things happened at this point. A huge earthquake occurred. Rocks were split. The curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Tombs opened up and the body of the dead saints came to life. John records a more detailed account of what happened at the crucifixion. The bodies of those three men, Jesus and the two thieves, could not stay on the crosses because it was getting late and the next day was a high Sabbath. So the Jews asked Pilate to break the legs of those on the cross to quicken their deaths. But the amazing thing is that they broke the legs of the two thieves. But when they came to Jesus, they did not break his legs because they saw that he was already dead. Now, these are seasoned executioners. They knew when someone was dead and when they were not dead. They knew that if he was breathing or if he was just in a comatose type of state, it was no fool in these people. They were seasoned warriors. But just to make sure, they took a spear and pierced Jesus' side with it, shoving the spear up under his rib cage and into his heart. At that point, blood and water came gushing out, proving that Jesus was already dead. And if for some reason he was not, the spear shoved into his heart would make sure that he was at that point. After this, his body was taken down off the cross and buried in a borrowed tomb. Matthew chapter 27 verses 57 through 60. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. You know, many overlook this small detail as unimportant in the grand scheme of things, but it further fulfilled scripture if we look at it. Look at Isaiah chapter 53 verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Isaiah 53 is actually a prophecy about Jesus, the then coming Messiah. Isaiah claimed that the coming Messiah, Jesus, would die and be buried in a rich man's grave. 750 years later, Jesus' dead body was taken down off of the cross and laid to rest in the borrowed tomb of a rich man named Joseph of Arimathea. 
Now, some slanderously propagate that Jesus did not actually die a physical death because physical death profits us nothing like this comment we got. No one died for our sins. We must crucify our own flesh on the same cross. It was allegory. Physical death profits us nothing. And may God have mercy on your soul. That is a very sad and blasphemous statement to make. In fact, it is so offensive. It's an offensive accusation hurled at the one who died for us. Because with this allegation, this person is actually calling Jesus a liar because Jesus himself said he would lay down his life for many. Mark chapter 10 verse 45 and John chapter 10 verse 14 through 18. The truth is this is exactly what Paul called teachings of demons. Look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12 through 22 says. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. Let us pause right here for just a moment or so and analyze what Paul just wrote to the Corinthians and consider this point. How can Paul, along with all the early eyewitnesses, teach and preach and proclaim the resurrection of Jesus if indeed he was never dead in the first place. If that is true, then the Bible, along with all of the witnesses, are a bunch of liars, and we have not salvation, as Paul goes on to point out in this verse, verse number 14. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all people most pitted. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, also in Christ shall all be made alive. You know, when someone so callously and ignorantly says that physical death profits us nothing, it screams no understanding of the scriptures or the price of salvation. For through Jesus' death and his resurrection, Jesus experienced death for everyone. Look now at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. What we do see is Christ who for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. How can anyone say that they read and understand the scriptures and yet desecrate what Jesus accomplished on the cross through his horrendous death and marvelous resurrection? Even the high priest admitted that Jesus had actually died on the cross. Look at Acts chapter 5 verse 28. We gave you strict orders never again to preach in this man's name. He said, instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teachings about him and you want to make us responsible for his death. They believed because they saw. Otherwise, they would not have said that Peter and the other apostles were trying to make them guilty of Jesus's blood, of his death. So to summarize everything for you all, Jesus wasn't in a comatose type state 
of being, he was actually physically dead. The trained soldiers who executed Jesus were professional executioners. They knew and recognized death, and they were very familiar with it and knew how it looked. It was their job, after all. Then, to settle all matters of his death, the soldier pierced Jesus' side all the way up into his chest cavity, puncturing his heart and causing blood and water to flow out of it. Jesus was no longer breathing. His chest had stopped heaving up and down. Then, on top of that, the pierced heart ensured his actual physical death. All of the early Christians who were eyewitnesses to Jesus' death and resurrection, including Paul, who once persecuted the church as Saul, died believing the death and the resurrection of Jesus. If the Pharisees and the high priests believed that Jesus died on the cross that day 2,000 years ago and did not want to be found guilty of his blood, even though they were guilty, Therefore, through his death and resurrection, Jesus experienced death for everyone so that we do not have to. If he had not died a physical death, our sin payment would still be outstanding. But as it is, his death means life for us and his resurrection is the sign of our resurrection to come when he returns one day for us. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and then share it with friends. Also, if you hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell, you will be ensured to never again miss one of our posts whenever we upload a new video. If you want to grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or your email, subscribe to our website, holdtohope.org or join our Telegram channel, Hold to Hope. We also have a quiz channel where you can have some fun while testing your Bible knowledge skills with our Bible quiz. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Easter to everyone and God bless you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Nuggets of Truth. Until next time, be blessed and stay blessed.